Now, in a lot of this section of this course, we've explored a lot of the technical details needed and research to colonize Mars. But with this concept comes a lot of other issues, and we explored a little bit of the why and how, but one question that repeatedly comes up, and rightfully so, is should we colonize Mars? And when we ask the question, should we, we have to explore a little bit more than simply, is there oxygen, or where's the water, or what are we gonna do health-wise with humans? There's other issues that come into play, like the identity of Mars, some of the issues historically around colonization, and how do we actually do this effectively, and should we? And, and this is an important question, and in order to explore this question, I'm gonna go talk to fellow ANU astronomer and Gamilaroi astronomer, Peter Swanton, who also happens to be a fellow shorts and thongs wear. So we're gonna go have a chat with Pete now. So we're here with Pete to talk about some of these other issues, these other issues that are actually really important. I think one that isn't actually ever really talked about, even in the ethics, I would say, or the should we of going to Mars is the identity itself of Mars, Pete, and what that means to groups historically, culturally, spiritually. Um, do you want to touch on that a bit? Yeah, so Mars is a really unique object. It's it's quite obvious to see in the, in the sky because of its beautiful red color. It stands out amongst a lot of the, the white stars in, in the, in the, on the black background. And so it's been known to, to cultures and people for, for, for a long time before we even knew what a planet was and, and the fact that there was other bodies in our solar system just like us. Um, and especially within Gamilaroi culture in particular, uh, they had a, a ceremony around that with the Arenti people of, of Central Australia. And so they would actually bring a red opal from, from the Orenti country and a blue-green opal, which represented Venus from, okay. from Gamilaroi yeah, yeah, country. Yeah, yeah. And they would come together around Quilpy in Queensland yep. and have a ceremony. And that coming together of Venus and Mars in the sky represented the, the eyes of the, the guardian that, that looked over the people. Yep. And the opals coming together on Earth represented the coming together of that here on Earth as well. So there's that huge connection between the planets. And, and the people on the ground as well. And, and this is, I think, one of the, the conversations that isn't had is we always talk about colonization and what it means for like the, the people on the ground, wherever that ground is, but not what that body means abstractly as the body itself, rather than a specific spot on that body, planet, moon, whatever, but the object itself. And I think that has to be part of this conversation. Yeah, exactly. Mars has a lot of features which suggest that it's had surface water in the past and, and all of these features that suggest that it was a very lifeful planet at some point before, you know, its its atmosphere was gone and, and these waters were evaporated and, and what happened to that. So it's it's definitely a place that may have had life at some point and may even still uh, right now, yeah. Yeah, and, and I think this is kind of this conversation of the rights, right? Who determines its right? Because it, in this case, I would say it is a little bit different than colonization here on Earth. It's not saying clearly there was one group of people that came to this land and there already was this group of people on that land. That life on Mars may still be there as we explore as bacteria. It may just be completely gone. It may have been there billions of years in the past. So do we have the right to change the history of a civilization because it's not changing it necessarily now but that history in the past yeah and it's also a really interesting question because if you say yes in this case and then no in the case of something like australia well where is where does that line get drawn yeah. like where does it become okay to to say that this is is something that we're allowed to do and then you start getting to very gray areas of ethics and what is life what isn't life and and all sorts of questions that we look at in science. Yeah, yeah and I, I, I think it starts to open up a huge can of worms. And I, and I think this is the thing is it has to be part of the conversation. We hear people saying, all right, well, yeah, it, it, we can get the water. We talked about earlier in this course how, yeah, sure, we can make oxygen. Maybe we could live underground with radiation. These are solvable problems. There's not a clear way of, I would say, solving this problem, because as soon as you try and say this is the answer, that answer doesn't just affect what happens on Mars. It happens what affects everywhere else. Yeah, exactly. And we're only just beginning to now explore things like the moons uh, within our solar system and other areas that, that could very well have these, you know, under under Earth oceans or sort of under surface yeah. oceans that could contain life. And as we start to explore more and more, we might find more and more cases of this where this is a real question that we need to to look at before we even go and visit these places from a scientific perspective. And I think then 
one of the things I guess that also troubles me in a bit is we say, hey, we want to do this. And then the question is, should we? And should we being, we have a lot easier ways of exploring the space now that don't involve humans. In the 60s, okay, the technology wasn't there. We kind of needed astronauts. We can build drones and robots and rovers cheaper and, and better than some of the human data. So do we, do we actually need to have humans on there to quest the exploration of Mars? Yeah, and I think that's a really good point because we need certain conditions to survive. We need bulky spacesuits and, and all of these things. Whereas you can build a, a drone like we've seen just recently on Mars that can fly at what are Earth atmospheres of 25 kilometers, something that is really hard for drones to do here on Earth. And so it's cheap technology, it's easy to do. So we've got to start asking whether or not the human aspect is actually required in this endeavor. Yeah, and I, and I think this is how we're going to have to think about this conversation moving forward of, of, of what do we want the longer term goals to do? You know, as we explored with the moon section, you know, the space race started of just getting to the moon and now there's longer term goals. There actually hasn't been the thought of the really the longer term goals for Mars. So if we can accomplish it with robots and, and drones, it kind of just makes sense because then you're not risking humans. You don't have the ethical questions of some of these other issues that were starting to pop up. It's cheaper because dealing with safety of humans as we explore is hard. So it almost seems to me that it almost is a no brainer to say, maybe we actually don't need humans. We could just do other things that make it cheaper, safer and more effective to do. Yeah. And at the same time, use that money to deal with some of the problems that we have in in sustaining life on Earth at the moment and, and a lot of the, the, the areas that, that are becoming problematic that, that we really need to be focusing on in an Earth perspective to make it as livable as we can for as long as we can. Yeah, and I think that's a really important question. You know, we explore so much about the, the costs and economics of space. And if there is a way of accomplishing our goals and it's cheaper so we can use that money to do multiple things, I, again, it, this seems to me a no-brainer. And I know not everyone has, has these views. Um, but what I'm hopeful for is this becomes a bigger and bigger part of the conversation rather than the who, when's the next rocket and how long is it going to take and how are we going to get the oxygen on Mars? I would say the, the other last aspect that, that sometimes comes up that also doesn't come up, but it, it's coming a bit more with all the issues of law is, all right, okay, sure, so for some reason we still need a, a small group of people on Mars, okay. How do you set up a civilization if people are living there? Like, it doesn't happen overnight. And what about those issues of saying, all right, now all of a sudden we have a bunch of people. We solved all these technical issues. We solved some of the health issues, even some of the psychology issues of people working together. How do you create a society new that is in an environment that we have never scraped? It's not even, again, uh, you know, the British coming to Australia not knowing how to live. This is humans going to another planet that they've never learned how to live. This is a, a, a different ball game, let's say. Yeah, and that's it's a really good point to sort of examine because the law systems, whether you're talking about you know traditional law systems of, of Aboriginal people or whether you're looking at Western law systems, these are systems that have developed over thousands of years. And when you're going to a, a, an area like Mars, which has such complicated... Uh, aspects of it to, to just be there and exist there to then expect to have that extra layer of of having a law system and a governing system of how the people are going to to be to to civilize there and and to to live amongst each other is, is a whole added um, thing on top of the the scientific problems that we face in getting there yeah and, 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 I, and I think what you said was just is, is spot on right you know groups in australia you know the the 300 plus nations and countries that have existed here have found ways of solving it but it took tens of thousands of years i mean <laughs> it doesn't happen overnight and, and i think this is the idea is we want things to be so immediate but this just may not be the case it can be and i think this just has to be part of the realization of mars colonization that it is it's one thing to explore it's one thing to want to study but the idea of living on another body in the solar system alone of all the issues you could have in other solar systems is just so complicated. But there isn't as much work, I feel, going into these areas. Yeah, and it's, it's at that point, right, where 
the technology is becoming more realistic and, and these ideas are becoming more viable but the areas in which we haven't explored yet like law and, and medicine and all of that are, are very new areas and are far behind where, where we are technologically and so it really is the areas that we need to focus on before um, we actually get to the point where it's too late. And so, you know, in this section, we've really explored all of these issues with Mars colonization. I think this is kind of a nice sum up because there's a lot of technical challenges that people are working on, as Pete mentioned, but there is a lot more work to happen and it may not be as quick. It surely won't be as easy as people imagine. Doesn't mean it's still not worth thinking about and researching, but it means there's still a lot of knowledge and science still to be gained from this idea of getting to Mars. <laughs>